and welcome to CU TV News Center for the week of February the 19th, 2009. I'm Drew Brown. And I'm Lauren Cross. After trying for about seven months to stay open, Brownsville Hospital closed its door to the public once again. The license for the land and building were surrendered to the state early this week, and all patients were moved to different hospital locations. On Tuesday, hospital officials traveled to Harrisburg to ask for aid from the Rendell administration, but returned with empty hands. They now face a lawsuit from San Antonio-based Presidential Health Care Credit Corporation, who claims the hospital owes them $1.52 million. Presidential suit also claims the hospital was delinquent with its vendors and it failed to keep a report of its finances. The hospital was 93 years old and closed in 2006 before a short resurrection in July by a community group. On Monday, police of Stamford, Connecticut released Sarah Harold's desperate call to 911 as her 15-year-old chimp, Travis, attacked her 55-year-old friend, Charla Nash. The tape includes Harold begging police to hurry and shoot her chimpanzee. As Harold tells police he's killing my friend, the chimp can be heard grunting in the background. Travis's unexplained attack seemed to be out of place for a chimp who could eat at the table, drink, from, drink wine from stemmed glass, use the toilet, and bathe himself, but primatologist Colleen McCann says that chimpanzees are unpredictable and dangerous even after living amongst humans for years. Cal U student Morgan Connor Contrill of North Huntington and Christopher Popovich of Fair Oaks now face charges after allegedly assaulting a California resident inside his apartment early Sunday morning. The men approached several women after getting off of a bus on 2nd Street around 4 a.m. and followed the women to their apartment, assaulting the unidentified man inside. The victim allegedly assaulted was taken by ambulance to the Mon Valley Hospital in Carroll Township for treatment of serious injuries. Contra and Popovich now remain in the Washington County Prison on $5,000 straight cash bonds. Both men are facing aggra aggravated assault, loitering and prowling at night, and disorderly conduct charges, with a preliminary hearing scheduled for February 25th. A simple shoplifting charge turned into a drug bust Monday after police apprehended a man in the quick fill in California. Brandon McNair was searched and police discovered 72 stamp bags of suspected heroin, drug paraphernalia used to pack heroin for sale, needles, and empty stamp bags. McNair was charged with use and possession of drug paraphernalia, possession and manufacture of a controlled substance, intent to deliver, and retail theft. He was arraigned and placed in a Washington County Correctional Facility after failing to post $5,000 straight cash bond. Facebook is now taking a step back after quietly updating its terms of use a few weeks ago. The changes sparked uproar amongst the 175 million Facebook users worldwide after popular consumer rights advocacy blog Consumerist.com pointed them out on, a, on Sunday in the post, Facebook's new terms of service, we can do anything we want with your content forever. But when Facebook users logged in on Wednesday, they were greeted with a message informing them that the site would be reverting to its previous terms of use while they figure out how to best resolve questions about the control of information on the social networking site. A prank gone horribly wrong has earned a Fayette County man three to six months in prison. Emmett Cook was sentenced Tuesday for killing his best friend when he pulled the emergency brake of a moving car, causing that car to flip. Three men were in the car, Cook, an unnamed driver, and Terry Karoski, who died when the car flipped. Cook told police that he had pulled this prank before and nothing happened the last time when the emergency brake was activated. He is being charged with involuntary manslaughter and reckless endangerment as well as a $13,000 penalty that he must pay to Karoski's family. Coming up next on News Center, the Cal U Weather Center has your weekend forecast. 